Welcome everyone to today's video. We are the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. My name is Alfira Boulay. And in today's video, we're going to talk about... What we wish we knew when we started playing piano. Elvira is going to start because, to be honest, like I, I've had an amazing teacher who played a, an incredible role in my development as a musician, as a, as a pianist from, from very small, professional musician because I studied professionally. So it's very difficult for me to say that there are things that I wish I knew because I was taught really, really well. But that's why I think it would be useful that you start. <laughs> yeah. Because your background was not completely professional in the beginning, right? In well, no, I definitely didn't know that I wanted to become a pianist until I would say I was 18 or 19, which is um, very late, of course. A lot of people know it a lot for, sooner. And, for me, and it was decided preparing. when I was five. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's a big difference. If you compare, yes, yeah. yes. So, yeah, that's why I think it would be useful that you start, because I'm sure that you actually have much more mm -hmm. to say than me in this case. I would say the number one thing that I wish I knew was how to handle self-criticism. Because I had, that was crippling to me for a very long time, and it sometimes still is, that because I would be what people consider talented, um, that that means like I would hear a lot, right? If I would play piano, I would hear probably more than average. I would hear what's wrong. I would hear that it's too loud. I would hear that it's ugly in my ears. And that already was from a very young age. And I didn't know how to deal with that. So if you hear things that you don't like, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be negative, right? But if you hear it, things that you don't like, you don't know how to handle that, it will become negative and it will become crippling. You'll not want to practice. You'll not want to, to do anything. You will not want to sit behind the piano. And I think that that's the number one thing that I can think about. Self-criticism. Yeah. How to handle it. How to handle when you hear something you don't like. Because that in itself doesn't have to be negative. It can actually help you become a very good pianist or whatever you want to be good at. Um, but how to handle that, that information coming in. To be honest, that, that's something interesting that you bring up because that came more, I, I became aware more of this later on. In the beginning, I was criticized enough by my teacher, <laughs> shouting and we, we had so much fun in that sense because I, I really enjoyed being taught in such an, such an intense and such an aggressive way, in aggressive in a nice way, he didn't beat me up. Uh, but um, so self-criticism then, you know, when you're criticized so much, mm -hmm when you when it's asked out of you so much at such such an such an small age right you don't you don't think about that that much yourself even though it could have been there now that you bring it up mm -hmm. i have no idea but it came more i became more aware of that later so i think i agree with with Elvira that this is something very important to to mention in general because there is a lot of people actually that have self-criticism and and most of the time people who are self-critical would develop very well because they hear things they hear of course they can hear what's good but usually they are focused on what's not good and that's actually good in the sense that because you hear that something isn't good you you're going to want to improve that and you are going to improve because of that um, so I think it's a great point. It's a great yeah, and point. I, I do see it in a lot of my students and, and some of them are very small already. So it, it's so different per person, you know, but um, I actually just realized when Dimitri was talking, perhaps it's nice to give you a few of the tips that I use in order to handle the self-criticism because I think it never will go away. So it's just about learning to deal with that. And I think that... Um, are you going to share it now in this video? Yeah, yeah I think a tip would be for me to exactly what because you just mentioned like people who are self-critical would focus a lot on what is not good yes and i think that that something that helps me is to to say okay these things are not good but with practice they'll be better so also to not to not forget that the reason that you know that these things are not good mm -hmm. the fact that you know that these things are not good mm -hmm. is a very good thing yes that yes. because you can praise yourself and say wow I actually hear 
what could be better. That means that I can be better. Yes. Because the alternative is you don't hear anything and you don't know what's going on. So if somebody doesn't tell you, you wouldn't be able to improve that. I so think that's it's a, a nice great... tip. Yeah. 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 So to recognize that actually yeah. the hearing itself um, of something will enable you is a positive thing because it will enable you in time to, to actually make it better. And even if you can't solve it yourself, you can go and ask for help from a teacher, from videos online, whatever your ways. The fact that you hear that something isn't good, that you have self-criticism is a wonderful thing. So I think the first step would be to encourage that and to to know, to recognize that that's a good thing. Yes, and perhaps like, for example, if it feels very negative for you when you're hearing that it's really not going the way you want, don't forget to mention some things that actually already are going the way you want. So try to balance out that focus because Dimitar mentioned like you'd be more focused, a self-critical person on the negative. Try to balance it out and mention a few things that re went really well. Um, so, so I think those would be perhaps a few tips on how to handle it. And we can, of course, do a more longer video yeah. on it. And what would be your um, second thing that you wish? So my second thing would be actually yeah. realizing that talent is, in my opinion, absolutely meaningless. So I think a lot of attention is given to the fact that if you do something well, a lot of people would focus on calling you talented and emphasizing talent. And I think that I learned so late in life that actually talent is in... just a load of crap. <laughs> in comparison, is just very, very small. You can't get anywhere by talent. It doesn't work. In life, you have to have a great work ethic. You have to put in the work and you have to learn how to put in the work and that you have to put in the work. And I think that that for me would have definitely, I would have loved to have known that a lot sooner. I would have loved to develop that kind of thinking a lot sooner. And I think, yeah. I think it's a great point. It's really a load of crap. It's not even a joke. It's just talent is not going to get you anywhere. Point. Is, is it my turn? Sure. I, I just, I thought of one more though. And I yeah, think that, that because I don't have any, actually, it's a really I'm... good one for you also to realize if you think, what do you want to learn from a professional? When I look back, I wish that I listened better to my teacher. And that's not a joke. That's not me trying to, to get my students to listen better to me. I mean, that would be wonderful, but it's not a joke really, because I think that you just have to really you you will progress the fastest if you have a if you have of course a great teacher that's very important make sure you pick if you are ambitious to get to to where you want to be a very good pianist if you are ambitious for that no matter if you want to be a very good amateur or a very good professional pick a really great teacher but i mean do what you're paying the, your teacher to do do what he or she says well i'll be honest with you while Vera was talking about those things i I'm learning a lot along the way, but I honestly can say that I don't wish that I knew anything because the, just the education that this guy gave me, my teacher gave me, it's just you, you can't wish for better. I, I don't think it's possible to have better. Honestly, it's the, the, thing that I the things that I learned from him, I don't wish for anything. I just am happy the way things went and... Um, now I'm learning things that I didn't know then, but I don't care because it's just I'm learning them now. And so, no, I don't wish for anything. I wish for you to have a teacher that really um, provides you with quality and that really a teacher that, you know, one of the most important things that I would say is teacher that can see what your weak points are, what your weak sides are, and to help you with that. Uh, what I can wish for you to have a teacher that adapts to your tempo of development. Like if you're a little faster, that he goes faster, that he's capable of going faster. And if you're a little bit slower, and I don't mean that with a negative sign, that the teacher also takes it a little bit easy on you and explains more and takes the time to, to let you improve the way you improve. That's what I would say. I, I personally don't have anything that I wish I knew. Like... I could say I wish I knew a few years earlier than now, a few, year, a few years back, that I knew that you have to practice slower, um, that you have to combine and practice in different tempi, 
that you don't practice only fast, but you practice also in the middle tempo, also in a slow tempo. This I wish I knew a few years back, but not when I started playing piano because I really had a great education then. Then at a later stage, perhaps, but still I don't have any regrets. I don't have anything that I wish I knew because I, I think it just goes the way it goes. If I have to think of one thing that everybody would wish they knew, something general that I can imagine that could be very good for this video is how you practice. Mm, yeah. If you know how to practice, you will be able to accomplish anything, be it you are an amateur or an advanced musician or professional or whatever, right? We're not talking about practicing a lot and being very good. We're talking about just knowing how to practice. Even if it is that you want to play pop songs, knowing how to practice is going to get you results. So if you learn that, how to practice from somebody who actually can play, you have pleasure, you're behind the piano, you're enjoying, but you want results. Everybody wants to hear nice playing. Nobody, yes. nobody likes playing and and sounding like like an idiot behind the piano. You just you just don't like that. We are not happy with that. Plus, nobody likes getting results after 45 hours of practice if you can do it in two. Exactly. So I think in this video, that's what I can sum it up with. For me, knowing how to practice, um, the rest, the rest, it doesn't matter because then you, then you get the results and then you're enjoying your playing more and more. Well, that's very interesting. This was also an interesting video for me because we actually, usually we discuss our videos beforehand, but now we really didn't know from each other what we were going to say. So it was also very interesting for me. Yeah, I was to... really, to be honest, I was really trying because you mentioned the video, mm -hmm. Uvira mentioned about this video before we started shooting it. She was like, let's not share with each other what we're going to mention. And I was thinking, I was brushing my teeth and like thinking, okay, now we're going to shoot a video. What am I going to, ah, couldn't come up with anything. But that's also very interesting. I mean, if you do have a really, really great teacher from the start. How can you wish them for? That, that matters so much. That matters so much. So yeah. yes, yeah. perhaps our next subject will be actually of the video, how to find a good teacher, because we have seen this question come along a lot of the time on social media, on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, people are wondering how to find a good teacher. So we do have actually some tricks for that. So that will be, I think, coming up soon. Yeah. And if, like like always, if you have any anything that's important to you, don't be embarrassed. You can always ask. No question is embarrassing, no matter if you're a complete beginner and you, you need some advice. We teach people from all kinds of levels. So feel free to ask us. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because you support us that way. Uh, if you want, you can uh, join us on Facebook. We're there. You can befriend us there. You can come uh, on Instagram. We're also there. We upload regularly different videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. For us, recording it was a great pleasure as always. And we'll see you next week again.